right now, girl. Where you going? Smile with us right now, girl. Where you going? Hey, what's up, guys? It's your girl Angel, and I'm back with another video today. Um, so today I'm gonna be finishing my life story video. Um, so this is gonna be part two. Um, I got a lot of awesome feedback from my life story video, and I'm so happy. Actually, I did get a negative comment that kind of like threw me off, and I disabled the comments for a little bit because I know when I spoke about like being a Jehovah's Witness, there's a lot of people that just have like negative feelings about it, um, and so they just commented like nasty things. But go ahead and comment; it's gonna get deleted um, if it's negative. Um, but I did get a really nice comment. They wanted me to share some more information um, about what ended up happening. Um, and the whole video, I don't want this whole video to be about um, what it was like being a Jehovah's Witness again because I feel like that was the main topic in my last video. Um, I just want to finish this video up, but I will answer the questions that that person asked in the comments. Um, so basically, do a little disclaimer like I don't have any problem or negative feelings like towards Jehovah's Witnesses. The people that I met, they were actually really great people, really nice, really friendly. You know, they were just people and they like did a lot for our family and they were there for us as much as they could be. Um, so yeah, like no negative feelings whatsoever. Um, it's just that the lifestyle wasn't for me and the household I was being raised in. Um, it just wasn't somewhere that I could flourish and be me to my full potential. I felt like I was trying, I was being forced to be something that I truly didn't want to be. It just wasn't who I was. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not for someone else. Um, so to answer the person's questions in the comments. Um, so no, my family didn't show me. I was not officially baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, I know in other religions, um, to my understanding, if you want to get baptized, you can do it almost any time. I do a little disclaimer, like, I don't have any problem or negative feelings, like, towards Jehovah's Witnesses. The people that I met, they were actually really great people, really nice, really friendly, you know, they were just people. And they, like, did a lot for our family, and they were there for us as much as they could be. Um, so yeah, like, no negative feelings whatsoever. Um, it's just that the lifestyle wasn't for me and the household I was being raised in, um, it just wasn't somewhere that I could flourish and be me to my full potential. I felt like I was trying, I was being forced to be something that I truly didn't want to be. It just wasn't who I was. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not for someone else. Um, so to answer the person's questions in the comments, um, so no, my family didn't show me. I was not officially baptized as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, I know in other religions, um, to my understanding, if you want to get baptized, you can do it almost any time, I think. Um, I'm not too familiar with other religions, but to my knowledge, I think you can get baptized like any, any time you want, pretty much. Um, but as a Jehovah's Witness, if you want to get baptized, then you have to go through some processes. You have to like have interview, have an interview with the brothers, um, and let them know your intentions, and they'll like get you started and everything. They'll ask you some questions and see if this is what you truly want. Um, I think I mentioned that in the last video that I wanted to get baptized. There was a period. A short period of my life where I was like actually living the way I was supposed to be um, but they said that I wasn't doing enough preaching hours so I'll have to come back in a few months and like try again um, so I never officially got baptized but I was technically recognized as Jehovah's Witness as a Jehovah's Witness um, <coughs> excuse me so when you're disfellowshipped, you're not allowed to speak to anyone that's a Jehovah's Witness. So let's say I did get baptized and then I decided I don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness anymore and I did something like really wrong that you're not supposed to do. Um, then they would announce to everybody that you're no longer a Jehovah's Witness and anybody that is a Jehovah's Witness is not supposed to associate with you or talk to you. You can still come to the meetings, but um, it's preferred that you just sit away from everybody else and 
don't speak to anybody except for like the head brothers. Um, you can talk to them, I guess, if you have questions or anything. But since I never officially got baptized, everybody can still talk to me. Um, but I didn't really go to the meetings after that. After um, I decided that it wasn't for me. Um, so anyways, no, my family didn't shun me to answer that question. Um, they still talk to me. And of course my mom wasn't happy about it. Of course my grandma wasn't happy about it. Um, but life continued. Um, so what happened, what was the other question? Let me go check. They also asked, um, am I still in the organization? Um, I am not. I did, haven't went back to the Kingdom Hall for several years now. I did go back like two years later when I was pregnant. Um, and I went to the convention. I went to the convention and I was pregnant and it had been like a year or two later and one of the brothers, they came up to me and I do remember this, like he just like greeted me and asked how I was doing but I could just tell like this look on his face like he was judging me so hard and he just had this look like he felt sorry for me and I was getting the vibes that, <laughs> that he felt sorry for me and he invited me to come to the meetings um, on Sunday next week and I was just like okay but I could just tell like he was judging me and he felt sorry for me and all that stuff because I was there I used to go there for years so I know the way that they feel about people who are no longer recognized as, just, uh, as Jehovah Witnesses um, and I know that you're supposed to come up to them and you know invite them to the meetings and you know reach out to them um, but they they feel bad for those people and to them they're like you're not going to get to live in paradise with us because you're not living this lifestyle um, so they just feel sorry for you and they you know try to reach out to you and let you know invite you to come to the meetings but I don't know I just I don't like feeling I don't like feeling judged so I didn't like that it was definitely weird to be on the receiving end of it um, even though I didn't reach out to other people that I knew were just fellowship because I was I was a shy person so that's not something that I did um, but just to have it be done to me after I've heard it talked about so much and I've seen other people do it it was definitely weird. Um, I probably don't plan on going back. I'm 22 right now. Um, I might go to a meeting one day if my mom like asked me to, but probably not. Um, I like the convention, but I might go to that one time, sometime later in my life, but I don't. At this point in my life, at 22, um, just looking back, I don't think it's for me. At this point who knows that could change one day I don't know but I don't think so um, and they also the person also asked in the comments they asked me um, is it better um, not being a Jehovah's Witness and like I said I feel like the lifestyle isn't for me I feel like now I'm able to be myself and express myself and talk about things that I want to talk about, do things that I want to do, and I feel like I can associate with other people, um, like a wide variety of people. I don't care what your religion is um, or anything like that. Like, I just like nice people, like good, genuine people um, who are interested in bettering themselves and their lives. So yeah, just for me, yes, it is better not being there. But maybe that is for you. Maybe you want to serve God in that way. And that is completely fine. Um, and that's just my view on it. Um, so yeah, like I said, I didn't want to make this whole video about being Jehovah's Witness again. I know that my first video attracted a lot of people that were interested in knowing what it's like to be Jehovah's Witness and everything. Um, but really, this is my life story video, and my life kind of included a bit more of that. And I also want to say that 
my life story video isn't like a funny video like because in a negative comment i got they were like nobody wants to hear this girl and i'm like this isn't meant to be like an entertaining funny haha -ha video like i want to pick up um let's pick up from when i was gonna be no longer going to kingdom hall anymore and my life was about to change completely um so i was like about so i told you guys i was homeschooled in my last video i told you i was homeschooled um from seventh grade to ninth grade and the reason i was homeschooled i don't think i mentioned that was because so that way i didn't have i, I was homeschooled my mom wanted me to be homeschooled so that i didn't associate with people that weren't Jehovah's witnesses um and like i said that resulted in me having no friends because nobody there at the kingdom hall was my age um and i wasn't allowed to be associating with my old friends or anything but like i said i was still talking to people on the internet and on the phone and stuff um so come ninth grade um for sixth grade no for seventh grade and eighth grade I was going to school online, but then once it was time for ninth grade, which was high school, um, they didn't offer the online course for ninth grade, so I had to find a different homeschool program. So I found this different program where they physically send you textbooks and it has little tests in there and you read it and you take the test and then you send them back the test in the mail and they'll send it back to you with the grade and everything. Excuse me. Um, so come ninth grade i signed up for this new homeschool program they sent me the books and for the entire year i probably did two or three tests i my mom didn't have me like on a schedule for doing schoolwork and nothing she didn't tell me to do it so i was like what 15. i didn't do it i didn't take the initiative to it and of course that's my fault um, as well, but it resulted in me wasting an entire year of doing no schoolwork and Did I mention this in the last video? <laughs> um, I think I decided that I wanted to do some dual enrollment so that I could become a nurse um, But in order to do that, I needed to go to public school. So I ended up getting my mom to let me go to public school the next year the following year um, and at this time, I was supposed to be in 10th grade, but since I didn't do any work, I didn't have enough credits to move on to 10th grade. So, therefore, um, I had to stay back in 9th grade um, when I went to public school in high school. So, I had to do 9th grade again, and I did it in high school, in public school. Um, but they told me that they were going to give me extra classes so that I could get caught up, and by the time I was finished with that year, I could then move on to 11th grade like I was supposed to be, but that didn't happen. Um, so fast forward a little bit, um, I ended up meeting this guy that I went on to date for like maybe eight or nine months. And when I met him, I knew he was going to be going off to the army, and I don't want to talk about him too much, um, so I'm going to try and keep it short. Um, I knew he was going to be going off to the army, so I didn't want to get into anything too serious, but I really liked him, and he was like, oh no, it's going to be okay, we'll work it out, um, and as we got, like, deeper into the relationship, we decided, like, oh, he's going to go to training, and then when he comes back, um, we'll hang out, and then we'll eventually get a place together, wherever he's stationed, and, um, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna drop out, I'm gonna get my GED that way, wherever we go, I'm gonna go to high, I'm gonna go to college there, um, and then we gonna be living like we grown, and it didn't work out that way. I ended up not finishing school, um, thinking, okay, I'm about to go get my GED, and I did get into some GED classes while he was gone, but the one that I went to the first time, like, it was a program to help you get your GED, but the people they hired there, like, they weren't actual teachers. They were just, I don't know where they used to work, but they were not teachers. So they didn't know nothing about math. And that was the 
subject that I liked it the most. Everything else I was straight, but math. I needed help in math, but they couldn't do that. They would tell me, like, I would be on the computer taking tests, and they would tell me, like, oh, pick this answer, and they would tell me the wrong answer. Um, so, yeah, I kind of lost my faith in them, and they helped me get a job. So once I got my job, then I stopped going there. Um, but then I ended up going to another program. Overall, haven't got my deed yet. It's happening this year. I'm speaking it into existence. I ended up getting pregnant and falling into a depression and everything, and I just didn't get to get it. But it's happening, because I'm not gonna allow my kids to be like, well, you didn't get yours, so I'm gonna get mine. And that's also another curse that I have to break, because nobody in my family since like my grandma has graduated or even gotten a GED. So that's something that I want to do, that's on my list, and I'm going to make it happen. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, once he got stationed off and everything, and that relationship was just toxic, like neither of us were faithful. I can tell you that straight up, neither of us were faithful. Um, I don't mean like I physically cheated on him, but like, I was definitely like flirting with other people, he was flirting with other people, I made a whole fake page and like catfished him, I was on some crazy stuff and it was just bad, uh, we, we just threw that relationship in the trash. So after that ended and I thought like we were about to move in together and after he was stationed off, I was so used to being with him every single day that when he left. I literally like went into such a depression because it felt like he died honestly um, and that's why I didn't want to go through with the relationship knowing he was leaving in the beginning because I knew that I was not gonna see him like I wanted to so before all that like we even lived together for a little bit let me tell you I skipped so much I skipped so much so Here's when I really stopped going to the hall. So when me and him were dating, it had been several months, he lived like 10 minutes away from me. So we got to ride the school bus together. Um, and so he lived like 10 minutes away from me. And there was one day he like got an argument with his mom. So he came over to my place and I lived in this trailer. I lived in this trailer, um, but my room was kind of like off to the side. So he docked up my window and he told me what happened, and I let him come in through the window. Came in, and I ended up like basically letting him stay there, like on the low after school. And long story short, my neighbors ended up seeing him coming into the window one day, and they told my mom. And my mom bangs on my door, and she's like, "The neighbors just told me that you're letting this boy come in your room, and if I see him, I'm calling the police." And you know I'm about to be doing this while you're living in my house and just going off on me. So once she left the room, I decided I was done and I packed all my stuff. I packed a bag and we left. We got on the bus, the city bus, and we went to his cousin's house. Um, but his cousin was moving like in a week, so we couldn't stay there. I called my grandma, I told her what happened, and I told her I ran away basically. And she was like, oh my gosh, where are you? I'm coming to get you. And I was so scared, I thought she was going to like bring my mom. Um, but she didn't, and she ended up letting me stay with her. Well, she let both of us stay with them, my grandma and my grandpa, until he got stationed off. And once that happened, my mom didn't talk to me, and I didn't talk to my mom for nearly a year and that's that's when I stopped going to the hall um, for good and after that I lived with my grandma <clears throat> and like I was about to say he got stationed off and I was so used to being with him all the freaking time and even though our relationship was like so dysfunctional, so dysfunctional looking back um, I don't know why I was like in love with him it was so toxic um, we were always just, he loved to smoke, like, he would go to the greatest lengths just to get something to smoke. And once he left, I, like, definitely picked up that bad habit. And I ended up, like, using smoking to, like, 
make me feel better for any emotion that I that I occurred. I smoke like every single day, at least two or three times a day. And I was so depressed. I would just be crying in bed, like probably the first two weeks he left, just crying in bed. Just I was a hot mess. I've never been that that bad. It just felt like he died because I couldn't talk to him. And I was waiting for him to call me or send me a letter and it took so freaking long. And he never even got to call me. Um, I only got some letters from him and <sighs> so depressed. And so yeah, um, that's when I ended up like using smoking as a way to cope and I made so many excuses for it like as if I was using it for like a recreational thing but I absolutely wasn't um, so that's why I no longer do it at all because I realized what I was doing um, and we'll talk about that self-awareness at the end of this video um, <clears throat> so he ended up um, graduating and I drove all the way to like, where was it? North Carolina, South Carolina? I don't know, it was like a state over. It was like a maybe eight hour drive. Me and his mom, we drove all the way there and I brought my friend um, that I met in my GED class and we stayed in this little hotel and yeah, drove all the way there to see him graduate and it was so crazy. He was like a whole different person when I see him, not even just like look wise, but just like his whole demeanor and like vibe. It was so different and not what I was expecting. Um, and so we stayed there for like, what, a day or two? And we drove back and he ended up getting to come on break and he came back to see me and I ended up just finding out he was talking to other people. And like I said, like I had been texting other people too, that relationship. And, at the time, I didn't realize what I was doing at, at all. Um, but we ended up breaking up. I was freaking devastated and crying like a maniac. Like I was a whole hot mess. And then after we broke up, again, went back into the depression. I literally allowed myself to have him consume my whole life. And everything that I did, and I'm not saying like he asked me to do any of this, like it was completely me just like putting my all into this person and their intentions weren't the same with me and I was just putting my all into this person and I wasn't leaving anything left for myself. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything for myself. Everything that I did was for him, for us, and my whole mindset, my whole like life, I was planning it around him. And no, <laughs> you can't do that because as soon as that person leaves you, you're left with nothing. And you're left with emptiness. And you can go to a dark place once that happens. So after that, um, you would hope that I learned my lesson and grew from it, but I don't know, like, I was so, I didn't allow myself to heal. That's what it was. I didn't allow myself to heal from that situation and that hurt. And I was, uh, I was going, I didn't have my mom. I couldn't talk to her. I had, like, no real friends that I could talk to. And... And just like, uh, I couldn't heal properly. So after that, I, so I ended up like going back to my old ways. And from when I was younger, when I was like 13, 14, 15, um, I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, but it was just this revolving door of dating a man after a man after a man after a man. And I wasn't allowing myself to heal or to be alone or to get to know myself at any point in time. Like, I used to think that I needed to be in a relationship or else I was gonna constantly be seeing 
a different person when things didn't work out. Um, when I didn't like them anymore or when we didn't talk anymore, I would find somebody else next day talking to somebody else. Like, I couldn't be alone. And that was horrible. That was horrible. Um, <clears throat> for my spirit, like, mm, so bad. Um, and that continued for about a year. Um, I didn't get into another relationship after him. Um, I was just dating different people. I was working. Um, and I had a car then. I was always out, always gone. Coming home at 3, 4 a.m. And I was like just going out. Ugh. I hate to think back to that time because it was so depressing. Always smoking. Drinking whenever I could. Whenever I could. I learned a lot that I wish I didn't have to learn the hard way. Those are the things that I did to myself and the choices that I made. I hated myself so freaking much. I hated myself. I thought I was disgusting. And I didn't understand why I did certain things. And I didn't feel worthy of love. I didn't know who I was at all. And that's why I made my self-love video, um, how to start your self-love journey, because for years, like, I hated myself because for so long, I didn't respect myself, and I didn't know really what that meant to respect myself and the way that I needed to move as a woman who respects herself and her body and, you know, stuff like that. I had absolutely no idea. It wasn't anything that was taught to me, was talked to me about. Um, like I said, me and my mom didn't talk. We didn't have that relationship. We never had heart-to-heart -heart conversations or talking about life or anything. So these things were completely like, like unknown to me. I carried around a lot of self-hate, a lot of judgment towards myself, um, a lot of guilt, like low-key just so many bad feelings towards myself. And now that I've learned, and, and let me tell you, once I did learn about self-love and the way that I should have been like treating myself and acting and the proper way to, to move in like a healthy manner, I was so... I was still so upset with myself that I even like allowed myself to do certain things and there was like such a dark time where like if you would call me like a horrible name I would be like okay like I already feel that way about myself there's nothing you could tell me that I haven't already told myself and I think that is so like incredibly sad um so when I talk about self-love and like self-awareness it's because I know that there's people out there like me who literally don't know about those things they might not have parents who talk to them about those things so they don't know they exist they don't know the right way to move the right way to heal and to just cope with certain things we use things like drinking and other people and smoking to cope and to suppress our feelings but it's just making it worse and that's what I did for so long and that's really 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 why I'm making this video it's not to talk about what it was like as a Jehovah's Witness or anything like that um, the real purpose of this video is sorry my phone died um, so let me wrap this video up because I'm running out of storage on my phone um, so yeah, like I was saying, um, a lot of us don't heal properly. A lot of us didn't have parents who sat down and talked to us about things. And you're not alone. You're not the only one. Um, and I'm speaking to those people who went through the same similar situations and didn't have parents <coughs> who even knew how to do those things because their parents probably didn't do it for them. Um, so there comes a time when 
There comes a time when we don't get to blame our parents anymore. We don't get to blame anybody but ourselves. And I'm an adult now, so I have to learn how to deal with those, how to deal with those things that I went through, how to forgive myself, how to accept that they happened, learn the lesson from them, and not to dwell on the past and know that I'm not that person that I used to be. And I feel, I do feel a sadness for the girl that I used to be, but I'm so happy that I don't have to live in that mental state anymore. Um, and that's why I definitely want to talk about mental health a lot more on this channel, um, as much as I do on my Instagram. Um, so make sure you're following me there. My name is Angel Gillen Official. My name is Angel Gillen, Angel Gillen Official. Um, I definitely talk about mental health quite a bit on there and my own journeys and things that I go through. Yes, now at 22, um, I'm still I'm, I'm teaching myself these things. And that's completely okay. Better late than never, right? Um, I'm just happy that I that I even learned about them at all and that I'm able to change and that I have changed so much and that I have the power um, to teach my kids differently and I'm making a conscious effort every day to to try and do do things differently with them and make sure that they know about self-awareness that they love themselves that they respect themselves and they're in tune with their intuition they know when to do they know right from wrong and you know things like that and if they ever need anybody to talk to they could definitely come to me oh so, yeah um thank you guys so much for watching this video i'm so happy that i could share this with you and i never thought that i'll be airing all this dirty laundry out um but i'm happy that i was able to do so and i hope that it helped anybody who um who feels the same way or who just wanted to see things from a different perspective. If you have any more questions, comment below. Um, let me know what you thought about this video. Like I said, if you got anything negative to say, you can just keep it to yourself because it's going to get deleted, okay? Positive vibes only. Um, I want my channel to only be filled with like uplifting information and just empowering others. If you look at my other videos there, you see that I talk a lot about how to make money online, how to grow your Instagram. So if anyone out there um, watching this video is trying to start a business or wants to make multiple streams of income for themselves, definitely check out my other videos. Check out my website, I'm on Supernoise Guide. I have um, some ebooks on there that teach you how to do so. I have so many awesome blogs on there to talk about life, um, self-love, how to make money online, and things of that nature. My channel is all about personal development and making money online, starting your own business. And I'm just here to help elevate everybody and so we can all grow together and live our best lives. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let me know if you guys like this video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an upload. And thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.